So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to invert a 2x2 two two matrix using Gaussian elimination. Now, of course, in the case of a 2x2 two two matrix, you probably know the formula for its inverse off by heart. So you might wonder, well, what's the point of this? Well, Gaussian elimination can be applied to higher order matrices to find their inverses, so 3x3 three three matrices or 4x4 four four matrices or indeed n by n matrices. So I'm hoping that by demonstrating it, in the example of a simple 2x2 two two matrix where we know what the correct answer is and we've got this nice simple formula for the correct answer, that you'll understand the technique and then understand how it could be used for a 3x3 three three matrix or a 4x4 four four matrix where the calculation is longer but the technique remains the same. So that's my aim for this video. So let's take our matrix that we want to invert. So it's just a 2x2 two two matrix. So here are our entries A, B, C, D. And we know, of course, that the formula for its inverse is 1 over the determinant, which is AD minus BC in the case of a 2x2 two two matrix. And then what you do is you swap the A and the D entries. So D comes up here and A goes down there. And then you put negatives in front of the B and the C entries. So this is the formula for the inverse of this matrix, which hopefully you know. So what we're going to do is derive this using Gaussian elimination in this video. So of course, the assumption has to be that this matrix actually is going to be invertible. So in the previous videos in this playlist on vectors and matrices, what we have shown is that um, a matrix will have determinant zero, i.e. it will be a singular matrix, if, the, if and only if the rows are linearly dependent and the columns are linearly dependent. And those two things are equivalent, of course. They're all in a triangle of equivalence. Um, now what we're going to understand is why, therefore, the determinant being non-zero is essential for the matrix to be invertible. So we're going to assume that this matrix is non-singular, so its determinant is non-zero. And as I've shown in previous videos, that means then that the rows are going to be linearly independent and also that the columns are going to be linearly independent. Now, in my demonstration, I'm going to actually find the left inverse for this matrix. Now, of course, the left inverse and the right inverse are going to be the same thing. They're going to be this. But I'm going to find the inverse by finding the left inverse. So it's going to be essential for me that the rows are linearly independent in order to be able to do this. But if I was trying to find this by finding the right inverse, so something that I put on this side to multiply with this matrix to make the identity matrix, then it would be very important to me that the columns are linearly independent. But both of those are given if I'm assuming that the determinant is non-zero. So I'm starting with this assumption that the matrix is non-singular, so AD minus BC is not equal to zero. And you're going to see why that's so important for the, make the inverse to be findable. So, as I was saying, if this is the case, as we showed in the previous video, we now know that the rows of the matrix are going to be linearly independent. And that is going to be essential in order for this Gaussian elimination approach for the left inverse to work. If the rows were linearly dependent, it would get screwed up. And that happens when the determinant is equal to zero we wouldn't be able to make the identity matrix. When we were trying to make the identity matrix, we would end up with a row of all zeros and we would never be able to get to the identity matrix. So that, so hopefully by the end of this video, you'll also have an understanding of why when the determinant is zero, you can't find an inverse for the matrix. And when the determinant isn't zero, you can find an inverse for the matrix. And it's all to do with the fact that this is equivalent to the rows and indeed the columns being linearly independent. So let's begin. So I'll just copy my matrix out again. So A, B, C, D. So I am going to now try and find something to put here to multiply with this matrix to make the identity matrix. So this is what I'm aiming for, 1, 0, 0, 1. And as I said, my approach, therefore, is to find a left inverse for this matrix. Now, of course, the left inverse and the right inverse are going to be the same matrix. I could also start on this side and say I want a matrix to put here that makes the identity matrix. That would be an equally valid approach, and you can do Gaussian elimination to find that also. It's just less conventional. It looks nicer to do this way, um, because then you're doing Gaussian elimination on the rows rather than the columns. If we went this side, we'd have to do Gaussian elimination on the columns, and it's just less conventional to do that, uh, but you could do it. 
And at the end, of course, we can, we'll get this solution from doing it on this side, and then we can confirm that this is both a left inverse and a right inverse for our matrix, just simply by multiplying this with this. So let's do it on the left then. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this in steps. We're going to find multiple matrices that are going to multiply with this, and each one is gradually going to get this closer to our goal of the identity. And this is an approach just like Gaussian elimination for solving systems of linear equations. And of course, you know how interlinked matrix multiplication and systems of linear equations is. Um, so let's begin. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this with a uh, two by two matrix to try and get it closer to our goal, which is the identity matrix. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and get the entry here to be one rather than a. Now, how can we do that? Well, we can put multiply by one over a here. Now, of course, in order to do that, we're making an assumption. We're making the assumption that a doesn't equal zero. Now, a could equal zero in our matrix. We didn't say a did, couldn't equal zero. Uh, so we'll come back to what to do in the case when a does equal zero in a moment. But firstly, let's just go through the simple case where uh, none of this dividing by zero causes us any problems. So we'll assume that a isn't equal to zero and we'll put one over a in this first entry of our matrix here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put zero here. Now, why am I doing that? Well, it's because the entries that I put here is going to determine what my first row of the matrix is going to be uh, that I'm producing. And of course, I'm not producing this matrix. So I'll put, um, here is the matrix that I'm going to produce by doing this multiplication. So the first row of the results here is going to be determined by my first row here because remember the way you multiply matrices, you take this element here and you multiply it by all the things in this row here um, and they're going to be, they're going to remain in their corresponding places. So what you need to do is you take this and you multiply it by this row and you take this and you multiply it by this row and then you add those two things together in the corresponding way. So it's going to be 1 over a times a, which will make 1, and then 0 times c. So what I'm going to end up with here is 1. And then for this entry here, I'm going to end up with 1 over a times b, uh, which will be b over a, plus 0 times d. So I'll end up with b over a there. And remember... I'm assuming a doesn't equal zero, so this is defined. So that's what I'm going to get in this first row of my result matrix when I make this the first row of the thing that I'm multiplying here. So that's why I'm doing this. That's why I put one over a here, because I wanted to get one here. Now, of course, I've kind of made this bit more complicated, but we'll sort that out later. The first bit is looking good. It's looking in line with what I'm aiming for, which is the identity matrix here. Now... Let's put, decide what entries I want to put in my second row. So I'm trying to get a zero into this position here. So remember, what I put here is going to be multiplied by this bit, this row, and what I'm going to put here is going to be multiplied by this row, and then we're going to add the two bits together to get our entries here. So what I'm aiming for initially is to fix this bit correct. So I want to get a zero in here. So Let's, for simplicity, just make the entry there 1. So I'm going to get one lot of this row put here. And then what I want to do is take away, therefore, a C from this bit. So I need to multiply this row by something that will turn this bit into C. So I need to multiply it, therefore, by um, C over A, and then I need a minus sign, so I'll get the minus. So if we just check this, we're going to take minus c over a and multiply it by this row, so that'll give us minus c here, and then minus bc over a, and then I'm going to add that to the corresponding entries in this row, so c will get added to minus c, so we'll get 0 um, here, and then for this entry, I've got this bit times this, plus this bit times this, so I'll get d minus bc over a, so I've got d minus bc over a. And oh look how that's already starting to take the form of things that we recognize from our formula. So if we put that into something simpler, so this is equal to 1 b over a 
0, and then we've got AD minus BC all over A, so we've got what I might just call the determinant of our matrix, because we know that's the formula for the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, over A. In fact, that actually, I think, takes up more room than just writing AD minus BC, but never mind. I might um, abbreviate it down further soon. I might just call it debt rather than debt of M. So I'm calling this matrix matrix M. So we've already assumed that the determinant is not equal to zero. So we've made progress here. We've got these two entries correct. And as I say, we'll come back to what if A was equal to zero, what you'd do in that case. Uh, but at the moment, we're taking the simple case where A wasn't equal to zero. So all of this would have worked. So that's what we've got by multiplying our matrix with this. What we're now going to do, we know that this thing here is now equal to this matrix that we've got here. So 1, B over A, 0, I'm just going to call that debt now, debt over A. What I'm now going to do is put another matrix here, another 2 by 2 matrix. So I'm going to multiply this red matrix, therefore, by another 2 by 2 matrix, and I'm going to try and get even closer to the identity. And hopefully you see the strategy now. If we keep doing this and eventually get to the identity, then our inverse will be the combination of however many matrices it's taken to get there multiplied together. So we just then need to take all of these matrices, multiply them together, and that'll give us what the inverse is. So that's our strategy here. Uh, and this approach we're using uh, is Gaussian elimination, this simplifying um, the entries in the matrix like this. It's the same technique that you use when you're solving systems of linear equations and are simplifying them down. So let's now try and find something that we can multiply with this red matrix here to get it closer to here. So the first thing I want to do is actually try and change this entry here to 1. Uh, and then actually I could also try and change this entry here to 0. So I could do this in two steps, or I could do it in one step. I think actually I'm going to try and do it in one step. So let's firstly actually work on the uh, first um, row of our matrix here. So again, the entry here is going to be multiplied by this row, the entry here is going to be multiplied by this row, and then the corresponding bits are going to be added together. So if we take one lot of the first row, so that's just going to give us this, we will then subtract off some bits from this row. Now, it won't mess up the entry that we get in this position, and I'll just draw out. Here is our resultant matrix. So what we put here isn't going to mess up what we get in this entry here because we'll just be subtracting off zero, so it's not going to make any difference. So we just need to worry about getting this to zero. So we need to multiply this by something that's going to make it equal to this. So we need to subtract off b over a, so we need to make this b over a, so we need to times it by b over debt of the matrix. So I think what we need to do is minus b times debt. I think that is going to work. So let's just go through this. So we'll get, uh, for this entry, we'll get 1 times 1, which is 1, minus 0 times this, which is 0, so we'll just get 1 there, excellent. And then in, for this entry here, we'll get 1 times this, which is b over a, minus this times this, or, or, or plus this times this. So uh, it'll be minus b times debt over debt times a. And remember, we've assumed the debt isn't equal to 0, so we don't have to worry about anything not being defined here. So the debt debts cancel, and we just get minus b over a. So we've got plus b over a from 1 times this, and now we've got minus b over a from this times this, so we'll get 0, therefore. So that's excellent. We're getting closer and closer to the identity. So now all we need to do is fix this bit here. So all we need to do now is multiply this row here by the correct thing to turn this into 1. So we don't need to actually subtract or add anything from the first row. So I'm just going to put a 0 there because we don't want this to uh, mess it up. So 0 times that will mean that we get no, no contribution from this row in making our row here. And then we just need to take something times this to make it correct. So we just need to multiply it by a over debt. So if we put a over debt there, 
a over debt times zero will be zero, so we'll still get zero here. So let's just confirm that properly. So multiplying this by this, zero times one is zero plus zero times this still remains zero. So we'll get zero there. And now zero times this will give us zero plus a over debt times debt over a, which will give us one. So there we go. We've got to the identity matrix. So just filling this in up here, we've got one minus b over debt, zero a over debt. And now what we know is that this overall product leads to this thing, the identity matrix. Therefore, if I just take this matrix here, multiplied by this matrix here, and multiply them together, that will give me the inverse of my matrix. So let's do that. So we'll put the answer here. So we've got 1 times 1 over a, so we get 1 over a there. And so there's going to be a bit of algebraic manipulation here to get it into uh, the recognised form. Uh, but don't panic, I hope it's all going to work out. Um, so then we need to add that to this times this, so the negatives cancel, so we're going to get plus bc over debt times a. So that's not debt of a, that's the determinant times a. Uh, so let's just check that I haven't made a mistake there. So 1 over this is 1 over a plus b times c over debt times a. Yeah, that looks fine. Then this times this, 1 times 0 is 0. So we just get there minus b over debt. So that's looking excellent because that's in exactly uh, the form that is in this equation over here because this is just minus b and then the debt's been pulled out, but it is minus b over debt. So that's looking excellent. Um, then next bit, so 0 times 1 over a is 0, and then we get minus c a over a debt. Let's get rid of the a because it cancels top and bottom. So we'll have minus c over debt. Remember, we've assumed a wasn't 0, so that's taken away any problems with that not being defined. And then finally, we get 0 times 0, which is 0 plus 1 over 1 times a over debt. So we get a over debt there. So everything's lovely apart from this term up here, so let's just make sure that this simplifies down. So if we multiply top and bottom here by debt, uh, and then actually put in what debt is equal to, so let's just take this out here. So this is debt over a debt plus bc over a debt, so that gets them both over the same denominator. So then put in here what debt is actually equal to, so it's AD minus BC, so that minus BC here is going to cancel with the plus BC here, so we're then just going to end up with AD over A debt, the A's then cancel, so we just get D over debt. And you can see that therefore putting that in here, we've now got our formula, pull the 1 over debt out, and you've then got D here, which is here, you've got minus B here, minus C here, and the A here. So there we have it, we have derived the formula.